This woman absolutely refuses to return her shopping carts. Wait, sorry. This doctor absolutely refuses to return her shopping carts. I'm not returning my shopping cart. And you can judge me all you want. I'm not getting my groceries into my car, getting my children into the car, and then leaving them in the car to go return the cart. So if you're gonna give me a dirty look, fuck off. This was a video posted by Dr. Leslie Dobson, a popular forensic scientist, author, and public figure. She's pretty popular in the true crime community and even recently collaborated with Annie Elise of the podcast Serialistly. And this video was not received well. You sound like a gem. My sister has five kids and still puts her cart in the corral. If you're too lazy to put a cart up that you got out, then do pick up instead. There is a secret third option. You unload the groceries and together with the kids, you go return the cart also teaching them to do it as a byproduct. And of course, this is where a lot of people started to bring up shopping cart theory. If you've never heard of shopping cart theory, the very next commenter sums it up very well by saying, the shopping cart is the ultimate litmus test for whether a person is capable of self-governing. To return the shopping cart is an easy, convenient task. A lot of people use shopping cart theory or whether or not you will return the shopping cart after you're done using it as a determining factor on if you are even worth being friends with or not. In fact, there's even a guy who created an entire YouTube channel called Cart Narcs, dedicating to calling people out who didn't return their shopping cart, asking them why they didn't do it, and encouraging them to you know, return the fucking cart so there's not just a rolling weapon going around denting people's cars. And this further social experiment dedicated to this theory seems to almost prove it. If you actually watch the channel, very few of these people who can't be asked to return their shopping cart ever actually own up to it or take accountability. That's not where the cart goes. It's where it goes when I leave it. Oh, well, what? Well, fuck if you like it or not. Fuck you. No, that's not F me. Put it on my car. And I'll break your fucking face. You're too sm you're too old to do that, sir. The point is. I don't care about your point. Why don't you want to make have a slight a polite why are you spitting on your own car? You're gonna have a fucking problem. Huh? My problem is that you left your cart out. I don't care. But that's the whole point is you should care about your fellow shopper. I don't. Why not? Did you have Does someone hurt you at some point in your life? Well you are an a-hole, sorry, sir. Wouldn't you hate it if you were sitting around? Why don't you make me take that car back? No, see that's my problem. That's not my no, problem. My no, mission. Right my well, why mis don't you make me put that my, uh, my mission is to help. You just asked me to. My mission is to help you find it within yourself to take the. Sir, this is my job to help out society. They very rarely ever admit they're wrong and most of them end up just lashing out and getting defensive. What this theory and the following test of this behavior seems to show us is that people who don't return their shopping carts tend to be self-absorbed, close-minded, and entitled. These people are more willing to spend 10 to 20 minutes performatively yapping about why they're justified in not returning the cart instead of spending two minutes just returning the damn cart. And this woman's method of performatively yapping her way out of not returning the shopping cart brings us to one of the most dramatic and hyperbolic excuses I have ever heard for this. It's May 31st and about 6 million people have freaked out over me not returning my shopping cart because my kids are in the car. So I wanna give you some statistics. Last year, 265 children were abducted in parking lots in America. Half of those were sexually assaulted. As a single mom returning your shopping cart, you are prime for a predator to watch and grab you. In many states, it's actually illegal to turn your car on and walk away. Many comments said that they would turn the car on, leave the air on for the kids, and go return the shopping cart. Well, in Los Angeles, in one particular parking lot, that's at least a 12-minute walk. You could go to jail. There are reports from the Bureau of Justice saying 10% of crimes occur in parking lots. If you get to a parking lot, you should look at the lighting. You should look at security guards. You should look at how the parking lot is laid out. If it feels safe, go return your cart. If it doesn't feel safe, trust your gut, trust your intuition, and keep you and your family safe. It's not worth the judgment you'll get. There are actual lawyers who specialize in parking lot crimes and they sue the grocery stores. And guess what? I've been a part of those cases. So if you wanna be ignorant, go ahead. But I also have videos on the mind of predators, pedophiles, and why child trafficking occurs and how victims are targeted.
That's right, Dr. Leslie's reason for not returning her shopping cart is because if she does, her children will be kidnapped. Here's a million dollar question. How did you get the shopping cart, Leslie? Did you leave your kids in the car when you went to get it? Or did you bring them with you? You probably brought them with you, which means you can probably bring them with you when you return it. That is such a contortionist level of mental gymnastics to go through so much hyperbolic fear mongering just to try and justify being lazy as fuck. Her and that one lady who kept yelling do not approach me at that random guy in the parking lot would get along so well, wouldn't they? I am a alone with my son, by myself, a woman, and a male approached me in a parking lot. He's excuse me, miss, and I don't know why in the hell he was approaching me or what he was trying to do. And before he, I mean, he was probably 30 feet from me when he said, excuse me, ma'am. And I turned around and I literally yelled at him and I said, do not approach me. And he like immediately started going in the other direction. And I just kept saying it over and over. And you know how some people go to therapy to get weapons, not tools? It really does feel like the entire purpose of her pursuing forensic psychology was just to pick up as much rhetoric for talking her way out of her own bullshit as she possibly could. Like she was really studying how to survive being one of the most annoying people you could possibly meet. I'm actually not that surprised that a delusional woman would come onto the internet with some absolute steaming cow manure of a bad take and then be absolutely flabbergasted that the general public doesn't accept it as the gospel truth. But I did get a glimmer of hope, a modicum of relief, as I noticed that her profile was listed as satire. And even saying intentionally disturbing. So I'm thinking, oh thank god, maybe she doesn't actually hold this opinion and she's just trolling. Maybe this is just an exaggerated caricature of what a person who doesn't return their shopping carts would look like. Maybe this is funny. We've seen other satirical caricatures played out on this platform a dozen times, like the guy who plays your broke boyfriend. Valentine's Day isn't even a real holiday. I don't know why you want me to go in here and spend all my money on candy. This is just a ploy for the candy companies to make more money. I can't believe you celebrate this shit. No, mom, mom, just send me 20. Mom, I'm in the store right now, mom. Or the girl who's like cooking my husband his fourth meal of the day so I can get into heaven. Today I saw a receipt for McDonald's in my husband's car. Since now I know he eats like that, I decided to make him something similar at home. And unlike my husband's life, these recipes will not be a secret. They are included in my cookbook, which you can buy for many dollars. I've decided to make him nuggets since he's been so into other chicks lately. So I went and took a look at her other content to see if there was even a slight air of satire, facetiousness, comedy, character work. But it's just not. All of the rest of her work seems to be her very seriously, not at all facetiously, discussing the severity of true crime. There is no other context to make us think that this is a joke. Because it's not a joke. This is actually Leslie's opinion. It makes me think that she only added satire to the top of her page as like a get out of jail free card whenever she says something offensive or controversial. This way she can just say, yeah, but it's meant to be funny every time she has a shit take. And it's just awkward because even if it was satire, isn't it kind of highly insensitively punching down to make the joke at the expense of literal abduction victims? With a platform as big as hers and a brand that's so respected by the true crime community, I was waiting for her to come out and say that it was just a bad joke. But she never did. Because it's not a joke. Because she really thinks this way. Dr. Leslie Dobson has doubled, nay, tripled down on not only the fact that she is correct for not returning her shopping carts, but also that any caring mother would not return their shopping carts. Look, Les, you're a numbers gal. Let's look at some numbers. 40 children have been taken out of cars in America since 2019. The average grocery store sees roughly 2,000 transactions in a day. There are 62,383 grocery stores in the United States. That's about 125 million people visiting grocery stores every day. That's 45 billion people visiting grocery stores every year, and that's over 200 billion grocery store visits since 2019. That makes the odds of your child being abducted from your car during a shopping cart return 0.0000002%. 
The odds of you causing damage to another vehicle by letting a 70-pound wheeled piece of metal fly around in a windy parking lot, though, is very fucking high. And when I tell you that I wanted to give Leslie the benefit of the doubt, when I did not want to believe that this could be anything but some misconstrued misunderstanding, I really do mean that. If someone as admirable and respectable as Annie Elise has been associated with you, I would hate for you to tarnish her reputation through you being so incorrigibly selfish. Yet here she goes, displaying behavior right out of the Ducking Accountability 101 handbook. In her most recent TikTok, she showcases this picture of some inappropriate emails that she's receiving. And let me tell you, if it is one thing these people are always gonna do, it is utilize the fallacy of false dilemma. What Dr. Leslie is trying to do here is go, Oh, don't you see? I'm getting mean messages from people, and that makes me the real victim. It's giving very, yes, I did something wrong, but now everyone's mad at me, so you should feel bad for me. And in your big age, doctor, we are, we are not playing that game. You can return the card. You can return it just as safely as you picked it up, and your refusal to do so says everything about your character. If you were so worried about your kid's safety, you would just order pickup or delivery. The shopping cart theory works for a reason. It tells us who is and isn't willing to consider other people in their day-to-day -day behaviors. People like Dr. Leslie only consider Dr. Leslie in their day-to-day -day behaviors, which is really terrifying when you consider that people like her are responsible for making life-changing psychological diagnoses. Well, I might not be able to give Dr. Leslie a clinical diagnosis, but I can tell her this about herself. You're full of bullshit. Just return your cards.